76 devs have been talking about some of the upcoming features with patch 32, so I decided to compile some of the highlights in this sort of dev explains video. Let's get started. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video, I hope you have been well. Now for this video it's going to be a bit different than usual, I would say it's a mix of patch overview with developers insight about certain new game features, changes or rules coming with the next patch. I ended up with over 20 dev codes on different matters, so I decided to split things up. This is the first part featuring 12 of them, mostly about the changes coming to the public event system. System, as well as new rules for experience in teams and legendary looting, among many other things. Alright, let's start with a brand new tab for the camp building mode. In case you didn't know yet, Bethesda is adding a new tab to the building mode, it's literally called new, just like the one we have for inventories. However, for camp building there is a different rule, as Bethesda recently confirmed. This new tab only shows up when the player has learned a new buildable plan during that same play session, so that's why you won't normally see it, it's hidden. Keep in mind that both new tabs only show recently looted or learned plans during one single play session. Anyway, I tested this by learning a couple of new plans from Holiday Gifts as shown. The new tab pops up right after I learn a new plan, but it's quite bugged because it only shows the first new learned plan, at least for me, which was this new rug. The second plan I learned, the fan doesn't show anywhere in this tab. I restarted the interface a couple of times, even fast traveled somewhere else and came back, but nope, nothing changed. Only the rug remained there. So I don't think this new tab will be very useful or reliable, maybe with further fixes with update 33 onwards or something else. Like, but for now it's best to stick to normal tabs once you learn a new plan, unless you want to start feeling crazy and doubting yourself. Did I really learn something new? Why is it not showing then? What's wrong? You know the drill, so <laughs> better check manually to be safe. Another huge change coming with patch 32 is about the looting system. Players will now be able to perform area looting by looting several bodies all at once. However, during part of the public test, players reported a lot of issues with this new feature. For instance, piles did not count as corpses, therefore they would not show up on the loot area interface. After a lot of investigation and some more patches, Bethesda claims they have identified the issue, but things are still not optimal or 100% fixed. I tested ash, goo and meat piles and for the most part it worked fine just as intended. These piles were being added together with other piles and they did indeed count as corpses. However, I noticed that sometimes they did not. In this test scene, for example, there were five corpses close to each other, but when I tried to access the area loot, first one of three bodies showed up, then four on the second attempt, but never five, which clearly indicates this new feature is not yet working as intended. It's not very stable. Also, my friend Maddock Roth reported a few incidents where the corpses had a grey button for area looting, so yeah, definitely something is not working very correctly. And in the end, there are some major bugs here that may condition or block your looting, so it's probably not a bad idea to keep doing it manually as it is, at least when it comes to things that matter, you know, like bosses, legendaries and so on, just to make sure you don't miss the loot. Next, let's talk about the loot area radius. I conducted a series of tests and I eventually discovered it's 30 meters in game, but we will get there later. Now, while discussing the radius for area looting, I noticed the developer stating something very interesting about how it's equivalent to a little bit more than a cell. But what does that mean exactly? Well, the developer Hydra Skills went further to explain that a cell is exactly 
4096 game units. Now, this sort of definition might be very, very normal in the developing world, but for us, ordinary people, it's pretty much like a language we do not speak, right? <laughs> At least it is for me. I have no idea what he meant with this sort of definitions, but after testing in game, I think he meant 30 meters. I made a line of corpses to see until how far the area looting system would allow me to go and it worked. The maximum I ever got was 29 meters in several cases, so I do believe the max radius is exactly 30 meters, it's just it's not very easy to reach 30 exactly. Um, the max you will normally see is 1 meter less, 29. I, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, if you are wondering how far is exactly 30 meters, here's a small display of the distance from my first lootable corpse to the last. It's a considerable distance, yes, but it's not that wide. So even though it will help you loot things much, much faster, it doesn't necessarily exclude looting in batches. For example, here the bodies were relatively close to one another, but they were over 30 meters apart, so I had to loot the area in two goes instead of just one, as it's maybe intended. I believe this is what will happen with most scenarios once patch 32 is live. As such, don't expect to be able to loot everything around you in just one go, that's very unlikely even in crowded areas like at Radiation Rumble. There's quite a distance between one end to the other, there's tons of piles around, so keep that in mind. Experience gain is about to change drastically with Update 32 in a very positive way. Now, when you are part of a team, you will receive passive experience from teammate kills as long as you are in a close range. In other words, power leveling will now become a thing in Fallout 76. Passive players can just tag along, join your journeys, and they don't even need any gear or hit anything. And still, they will receive huge chunks of experience just for being close by. However, what you may be wondering is how much experience can you earn passively? Well, the community manager Volsi confirmed it's exactly 50% of the total experience. So let's say you get 300 experience for killing a certain enemy. If your teammate does not hit it, they will receive half 150 experience passively. It's a pretty good deal, it's another incentive to play as part of a team as well and to tag along with your teammates. It means you can often earn more experience when you play together, especially from those sneaky enemies or missed kills. I think this feature will be particularly useful for daily operations and public events with enemy waves, you know, things like Radiation Rumble or Line in the Sand, Scorch Earth, a colossal problem and so on. It can really increase your experience gain. It's going to be a game changer, that's for sure. Now, Bethesda is introducing the shared legendary rule with update 32, which means any player close to a legendary enemy will now be able to get loot, even if they do not hit it by any means necessary. The only rule is to be in the proximity radius, so I would say within 30 meters or so. Moving forward, I've seen a decent share of questions about this new rule, such as players asking about the exact radius or even if a line of sight is necessary to acquire or access such loot, to which the community manager Volsik replied no, shared legendary loot does not work or depend on any sort of line of sight, but it does depend on the radius. So make sure to be close to legendary enemies or hit them from afar if you don't want to miss its contents. It's a very straightforward system and it will certainly help a lot of players especially those late to the party. It's loot for everyone now, it seems like. We are halfway in and now let's dive into the new public event system changes. There's plenty of them, but for this point I want to focus on what the quest design Coral stated regarding the event spawn rules. First of all, Bethesda changed the event timer to the in real life clock. Now a public event should start on the real world clock 20s, every fixed 20 minutes as Carl explained. 
fixed hour, then 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and repeat. This change will increase the amount of spawn public events per server and hopefully encourage players to join public events more often since there will be plenty to join. I mean, right now, most of the time in my end, the servers are empty. There's like no events to join at all, and that's a pity. There should be more stuff to do in endgame, that's for sure, so I hope this will help. On the other hand, there are a few exceptions to this rule. For example, seasonal events starting on the fixed hour, like Fastnacht Day, Meat Week, or now the Modman Equinox, will always take the fixed hour slot. But Coral confessed he is currently trying to find a better solution for this. Another exception to the 20 minute spawn are all public events started by players such as Encrypted, Scorch Earth or a Colossal Problem will not affect this sort of time slot. That's a relief. It would be silly to put those on a shared cooldown indeed. Now, let's proceed to the next point. Alright, so every 20 minutes a public event should begin, but how will it work? After all, public events are all different and some are much more challenging and time-consuming to complete than others. Well, as Carl explained, Bethesda has been reworking and adjusting many public events to properly fit his new 20 minutes meta. Now, public events are aimed to last 10 to 12 minutes with about 5 to 6 minutes of pre-game, such as waiting for the event to start, for more players to arrive and so on. I think this is a pretty good concept, it also works as a balance. Needless to say that a lot of things change, there are at least 7 public events with minor changes, it's a full page of patch notes as you can see, but overall Bethesda just tweaked these events to ensure they can meet the 20 minutes meta, by making them shorter such as Radiation Rumble or Line in the Sand, or by making them a bit easier to do, like making essential event assets more durable such as Free Range or Campfire Hills. Lastly, do not expect any major changes to public events. The focus here is to make things more consistent and balanced. Still on the public event rework, there is an important exception to know, as Quest Design Coral explained. If a public event is already active and ongoing past 20 minutes, then no public event will spawn, sadly, which can be a bit of a hassle if, let's say, you finish right after the time slot, let's say at minute 21 or 22, if this happens then the next public event will only spawn at the next fixed 20 minutes time slot. Carl also said the team is currently trying to iron down all the possibilities or exceptions for this new 20 minutes time slot. He finished with a very interesting remark where bugs related to this will be treated as high priority ones. I can totally understand why. Okay, so one of the most noticeable changes coming to public events is related to Radiation Rumble, one of the most popular events to farm experience. First of all, the scavengers are now a bit stronger, so they shouldn't die as easily as before. Great news indeed. Moreover, the event time is getting decreased from 10 minutes of pure intense action to just 8 minutes all in the name of balance. According to the quest design Coral, this change was done to ensure the event can be completed under the new 20 minutes goal as per usual, but this new change is not very popular among players so far, so he ended up advising players to write down feedback if they are unhappy with this change. I mean, in my experience, normally the entire server joins Radiation Rumble, so these 10 minutes are done very easily. But if not a lot of people join, then yeah, it's not so easy to complete it, so I kinda understand why they reduced the time. Maybe it's really for the best, it's too early to judge, so let's keep moving. Something else that caught my eye was about the riding shotgun event and why it's not labeled as a public event. It's actually something that always made me wonder. It does feel like a public event, the rewards are even pretty good, especially the caps, so why not? Well, after a long while, we finally know the answer. The quest design Coral explained the main reason lies on the location. The tunnels are super tight, so it will not be a very pleasant experience for a large group of players to navigate all at once. Another reason is the difficulty. This event is relatively easy and can be completed solo without any major problems. Well, I guess Coral does have a point here. 
Now with this new perspective in mind, I guess the non-public label is actually the correct one. It would be really chaotic if 10-15 people tagged along such narrow tunnels in search for the Blue Ridge Caravan crates, for example, and yeah, I can't deny the event is super easy too, so he really has a point here. Well, at least now we know the answer. The daily missions past the bucket and someone to talk to have been disabled for a while now, and by that I mean many, many mounts. Recently, players have been asking developers if they intend to bring those back, and sadly the answer is no. But as does not intend to bring any of those two daily quests back into 76. The reasons remain unknown, but as far as I remember, they disabled them as an attempt to block major exploits, but I hope my memory is not failing me here. Anyway, it seems like the long temporarily disables just became permanent ones. As such, I don't think we will ever see these two live again. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to mention that Bethesda always had plans to add a new pennant ever since the ongoing public tests started. In October, the community manager Volsi confirmed the team was working on a new pennant, and then a few weeks later he gave us an update about how the pennant was being finalized. Then last week, they finally made an official reveal of how it looks like and what requirement is attached to it. This time it's very very simple, all you have to do is to join the PTS at least once to log in there, and that's it. That should suffice to unlock this new pennant when it reaches the official servers in December. There are currently 6 released PTS pennants, so the Modman one will be the 7th one, just to let you know. And the new pennant completes this Dev Explains video. I hope I could enlighten you a little bit about what's coming with update 32. I have some more dev codes on the way for another video. Hopefully, in the meanwhile, I will be able to retrieve some more interesting posts. For now, that's everything I have. I am Arte Branko, thanks for watching and stay tuned. I'm preparing a lot of stuff for Christmas and for the Fallout for Hope charity as well. Don't forget to leave a like, comment below and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Now I will catch you all very very soon in the next one and as usual a huge thanks to all my dear supporters. You guys rock! Well, take care, adios, bye bye! <laughs>